Why Bond? So, you know, why did I pick Bond as my hero? Well, it's not just because I'm English, it's not just because I already own a Turk, although in all fairness, when we came up with the idea, those were two key criteria. It's because Bond has been around for 50 years now, and Bond is constantly reinventing himself to stay relevant to the current generation. And one of the things that I'm really proud of with NetSuite, we've been around 15 years, which for technology is actually be quite a long time, so that's given us enormous momentum, this amazing application and feature set we've been able to build up, and this enormous ecosystem of partners. But what we've also been doing, what Evan and the team have been able to do in the last couple of years, last few years, is they've devoted an enormous amount of time and resources to reinventing not just the feature set, but also the underlying technology. You've already begun to see some of the benefits of that, and you're going to continue to see some of the benefits of that in the next couple of years, as we have new ability to scale, new ability to grow the platform. So we're very excited about that. The other thing, so we'll stay relevant for the next 15 years. The other thing we talked about was these new verticals. Zach talked about manufacturing, something we're very excited about. Uh, that's going to take us to a whole new set of customers that we've not been able to address before. But we've also, Zach laid out the vision of sweet commerce a year ago. And that vision of sweet commerce is connecting your ERP with your front e website and connecting both front and back office. That's a vision he laid out a year ago, and now you see incredible companies such as William Sonoma actually executing on that and going live on that already. So that's just unbelievable um, experience we've had in the last few years. So with that, I'm going to move to the cautionary looking statement, which I'm sure by now, with 200 sessions, you've all seen. So, uh, you know, so obviously don't make any decisions without checking out everything first. OK. So whenever I think about NetSuite, I always talk, think about the three parts that make up NetSuite, which is NetSuite, the company, and its employees, our customers, and our partners. We cannot succeed alone. We all succeed together. And I'm going to talk about all three of these today in a slightly different context than what I've usually done. OK, so starting with NetSuite and what we've been doing. So one of the themes this year that we've got, and actually the theme that you've seen started a few years ago, but really moving forward in the last couple of years, is this concept of turning ERP inside out. NetSuite started originally as an ERP system, and then we moved into a suite. We had CRM. We added Suite Commerce very early on. But the concept was really initially starting with just exposing the data that we had in the ERP system and expose that in a relevant way to our customers, partners, vendors, et cetera. What we're doing now is we view NetSuite as a central hub, how you can connect your entire supply chain, your entire customer experience. What we see is nothing exists in a single site anymore. Everything exists around the world. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about this concept today. And what this really means to me is really about the customer experience. So we, I met a customer, CoLogic, a few years ago. And these were guys setting up a brand new company, but they'd done it many times before. They were real strong operators. They knew how to get the trains to run on time. They knew how to deliver things at the second they say they would deliver them. And when they started with a blank piece of paper, what they did is they looked at their customers' touch points and how they wanted to interact with their customers. And this was before they ever selected NetSuite. And they built that flow. They built that interaction, how they wanted to interact with their customers. And then they went and selected NetSuite. And then they built all the procedures and processes to support what was their vision of how they interact with the customers. And I, I, that really opened my eyes to what actually that's exactly what NetSuite allows you to do. You can absolutely make that work with NetSuite. So traditionally, ERP systems <coughs> were built and were sold to make the internal operations of a company run more efficiently. That's why ERP was created. It was to eliminate manual processes. It was to eliminate paper. That's the original idea behind ERP. And NetSuite can absolutely do that, and we do that better than anyone else. You will see better order efficiency. You will see a reduction in the time spent on accounting. You will see lower development costs, lower IT costs, improved employee efficiency. So we do that amazingly well. But what we also do is not only help your internal company run well, we're also going to help you run your entire business end to end with all the components of the people that you work with today. So ERP inside out, it's really starting with the customer experience. And what I'm going to talk a bit about today is how you take some of those back office systems, which traditionally have been used to look inwards, and turn them outwards so that you can actually make a better customer and vendor and supplier experience for yourself. So, 
you know, in the original model, in fact, I think the very first customer request Evan ever got, I was the 15th employee at NetSuite. By the time I arrived at NetSuite, that we already had a customer center. And that came from a customer idea. Someone sent Evan an email asking, say, you've got this great website, you can show it internally, I can see internally, can I show this data to my customer? And Evan thought it was a great idea, and so that's what we did. And we produced this customer center, one of the first things that we ever did. And the great thing about that is, the data is accurate. You're all looking at the same piece of information. It's not a portal you're putting on top of something else we have to do integration. That data was very accurate. How you present internally to your employees and how they use it and how you present externally to your customers and how you use it can be very different. And over the years, we've been able to really expand that concept, especially with the additional sweet world, sweet commerce. And what that's been able to do is be able to take not just very specific data, but any data that's contained inside the ERP system. One of the ways that we actually run the business at NetSuite, and anyone who's a customer here knows this, is that we run the business on NPS, Net Promoter Score. Every six months when you log in, we ask you the question, would you recommend us? And in fact, for it to count as a positive, it has to be a nine or 10. Anything below that doesn't count as a recommendation. So we, work, we strive hard to, to make that work. And one of the ways that we've discovered, talking with consultants, talking with people who've had experience of this, is the way you can move your customer satisfaction the most and the way you can improve your NPS score the quickest. You can add features, which obviously we do, and make the product more stable, better support. And that works, but that works over a long time. But the way you move the, the, the bar the quickest is the last interaction the customer had with you. So be a sales experience, a service experience, a support experience. If you make that customer interaction a very positive experience, you will instantly improve your customer satisfaction and you'll have a much more dramatic effect than almost anything else you can do. So what we're going to talk about is really using these systems and these four areas I'm going to talk about today, which is PSA, sweet commerce, billing, and one world, how you use these systems to actually create a great customer experience. So PSA. So traditionally, PSA, what it was designed for, and when, when we looked at our original designs about this, it was about getting an accurate bill to your customers. That was really the primary purpose of PSA, is how do I collect the time, how to create billing rules and revenue rules, and give the right invoice to my customers. And that's very important. But what it's transformed to over the, over the last few years, and how we think about this, and how we think about starting with any product design, with looking at the end customer experience first is, is how is that going to enable me to provide value to my customers? Well, in services, and Tim can talk to this uh, all day long, is it's about do you have the right resources? Are you committing to hitting your on time and on budget? Can, your, can you see visibility of what your customer or what the project is at? And can your customers also see that and collaborate with you? It really, a, a services implementation, a project is really about collaboration with your customers. And so the way we think about PSA today is really about enabling that. Obviously, the billing is still incredibly important, and measuring the efficiency and the ut utilization of the team is very important. But it enables you to free yourself to provide more interaction, more data to your customers. So when we designed the NetSuite OpenAir UI, the new UI, it was really with that idea and that concept in mind. You can really track the progress of how your projects are. We really focus on bringing the resource allocation, because obviously having the right resources on the job is incredibly important in order if you're going to have the right result. And then also obviously seeing all the dashboards, which are available not just to you, but also to your customers as well, so they can see what's going on in their jobs as well. Real-time collaboration, making for more effective services engagement. And that's exactly what Software AG will tell you. The 2,800 users they have managing their time and projects, what they will tell you is they went from spending a lot of their time dealing with how to build, how to manage, using spreadsheets, to now spending more of that time working with customers and making sure that the experience the customer had about when the project was going to be delivered was very consistent. So sweet commerce. We've talked a lot about sweet commerce both last year and this year. We had that great example of William Sonoma. I want to talk to you a little bit about a slightly different use case of sweet commerce. Uh, Zach talked in William Sonoma, which is really a B2C uh, case. This is an example of EndoChoice, which is a distributor of medical products, sells to doctors' offices and clinics and hospitals. 
and they created not a B2C site, but a B2B site. And what's great about NetSuite as a B2B tool is these, these nurses and doctors would previously pick up the phone, place an order. Now they go to this website, they log in. When they log in, what they first see is all the products they order every single week. It's a very click view. They just click it. They can see what the inventory status is. They can see the lead time. They can see the expected delivery time. But with NetSuite, what they can also see, they can actually see their customized pricing. What's different in the world of B2B versus B2C is traditionally the pricing is a contract, it's a negotiation, and it can be very complex. It can be based on volumes, it can be based on certain criteria. In the B2C world, it's often a promotion, you know, free shipping or 20% off if you put in this code. It's far more complex in the world of B2B. And they can see that when they log in. And it's not just, they don't just take a credit card, they can also do invoice and credit limits. And so if they go place an order that pays them over their credit limit and they see their past due, that can be reflected there as well. This significantly redu reduces the amount of interaction that you are having verbally over the phone, so it becomes very efficient, but it also puts into their fingertips that they can work when they want to work, on the time they want to work, 24 by 7, and they can see the status of their orders and the status of products across the supply chain. So that's just a phenomenal example. I truly believe NetSuite is absolutely the best B2B solution for um, a B2B portal that exists in the world today. Another area which is very near and dear to my heart is billing. Zach talked about unified billing. One of the challenges with billing, and this really goes to the power of the suite, is it's the ultimate integrated product. Billing is a result of a bunch of processes that happened before, what you shipped, what time you billed, what subscription you signed, how much usage. And then once you've created the invoice and sent it out, then you've got to still work with it. You've got to do revenue recognition, you've got to do collections, you've got to feed into your financials. So this is an incredibly complex thing. And many, many companies right now are adding new business models, new billing models as the economy changes. So the way this is happening right now, we're seeing this quite a bit, and one of the reasons we built this recurring billing model inside of NetSuite is a company, a business side of a company will come along and say, I want to produce this new business model. I want to build my customers in this new way today. They go to IT or the finance team and say, can you support it? The finance team says, my traditional ERP system isn't flexible enough. It's not going to happen on the time you want it to happen. So let's go look for a billing system, a standalone billing system, because they think their pain is a billing pain. Well, I can assure you, if you've head down that path, your billing pain has only just begun. Because this is so tightly coupled with everything else that you do, there's no way to make that work effectively and still maintain a positive customer experience. There's no way to get everything onto the same bill. This is an example, this is a slide we show to give a kind of an overview of what the process is. And it's connected with receivables and revenue recognition and accounting. One of our competitors looked at this slide and said, NetSuite's overcomplicating it. This is actually a simplification of what we actually do. You know, we often say, Zach says, that NetSuite was born to a karma of struggle. We like to take on the difficult things, and we do. We like to take on the difficult problems. And this is one of those difficult problems. And to solve it, it really needs to be integrated. And what the end result of that is how that provides value to a customer. You take all these different billing methods, the product-based, the services-based, subscription-based, the usage-based, you can combine them together, put them onto a single invoice, and then present it in any form that you want to the customers, be it electronically, by paper, fax, through email, that is through the website, that's entirely under your control. And getting your billings wrong can be an incredibly difficult thing when you're working with your customers. If you think about the interactions that you have with various, be it a phone company or a utility, and you have questions around your bill, getting to the details can be incredibly frustrating, incredibly difficult. With NetSuite, not only can you present the bill to them, but on the sweet commerce side, you can present the backup data and all the raw data if you need in order to validate that bill as well. And U-Test is an example of a company just doing that. And when you talk to U-Test about why they did this with NetSuite and how they did it and what the advantages were, what they'll tell you is the biggest advantage of NetSuite in the world of billing is its flexibility, its agility. And this really speaks to the value of the platform. 
The platform is one of the best things I think NetSuite's ever done. It really gives this flexibility, allow you to handle all sorts of different scenarios. We can imagine only so many things that you can do with the product. The platform allows your imagination to take over and for you to execute on what the business wants to do. One world. So one world. So how does one world impact your customer experience? Well. For one thing, and many people may not be aware of this, this is just a, a sample list of the Fortune 100 companies that are using OneWorld today. It's actually 20 of the top 100 are using NetSuite OneWorld in various divisions and locations around the world. So this is being embraced by the largest companies in the world. United Healthcare, for example, number, number 17 on the Fortune 100. I met the team here this week. They were asking me why we never put their name on a slide, and so put you guys first. Are you guys here? OK. I told you I would. OK. So they use it. They deliver over 200 million pieces of collateral to their customers every year using NetSuite to manage that. Just for, you know, and they'll tell you how much they, they love it, how much it works with their other systems, and how they've been really being able to be very efficient in their use of NetSuite. So OneWorld today spans the globe. You know, transactions in more than 150 countries around the world, 190 currencies. It just, I mean, we really have spanned the world, and we've done an enormous amount to make that happen, and it's not an easy thing to do. When you look at one world, what you have to do when you localize, the first thing you have to do is you have to do compliance. So we maintain ourselves, in, in, with a couple of partners, 54 different countries where we're maintaining all the tax rates, the rules, the forms. So you can, from with inside of NetSuite, actually fill out all your tax forms and send them off directly to the local tax authorities. Those were not the type of things that traditional ERP systems were ever built to do. The second level of customization that we do when we go into country is really around the local requirements in terms of payments, shipping, et cetera. So we go into these countries, we have a whole team, that's all they do is look for how people pay, how they ship, what are the local customs around that. And then the final area we go into is we then actually go in and actually look at the workflows and the processes that that business unit, those countries will use to actually pay their bills or collect their receivables. And so do the localization of the actual uh, local culture items as well. And we've been doing all this, and we've been doing it in spades. So one world now really spans the business. So why is that important? Why is that really important? Because when we built one world, we didn't build it as a consolidation tool. We built it as a tool to run a global business. It's not just about consolidation. It's about running a global business. Now, there's a term out there, which you'll like, which I think actually ties in very well with what we're talking about, which is global fractal supply chain. So what is a fractal? Well, a fractal design is a self-describing pattern that looks the same up close as it does from afar. Traditionally in manufacturing and distribution, when it, the old ERP systems were built in the 60s, 70s, 80s, it was all about all the workbenches, all the procedures existed within a single physical location. You move from this step to this step to this step, you pull something from the warehouse, you schedule the time, all existed within a single location. And that's how these routings were designed to be built. That's not how it works today. Today, the, the supply chain is global. You may do manufacturing in China, you may do final assembly in Mexico, you may have distribution in all the countries around the world. So we actually look at this, go back big and actually look at what you're, the globe and where you're actually working with your partners and your vendors. It actually looks similar to what it did in the 70s when you looked inside a factory. That's why they call it fractal. It looks the same depending on, on the view you're looking at it. And so what One World does, One World was built to solve this problem. No other ERP system was built to solve this problem. We built this from the ground up. And with the addition of sweet commerce connecting all these various pieces, and these may be your company, it may be your partners, it may be a different division of your company, all designed to work seamlessly together. With that, I'd like to bring up an example of a customer who's been doing just that. So I'd like to introduce Mike McCree from Land of Lakes, VP of Technology. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Good. Mr. McGeever, I presume? Yes. Uh, you didn't Great. get the dress memo? Yeah. I missed out. <laughs> okay. So, um, 
So if you wouldn't mind just describing a little bit, I know a lot of people know who Land O'Lakes are, but maybe you can describe a little bit about them and uh, what they do. Okay. Land O'Lakes is a $14 billion diversified manufacturer and distributor of consumer product goods and agricultural products in the United States. Uh, we're the largest manufacturer of uh, butter and cheese in the U.S. We're the largest feed producer in the U.S. and then actually in the world under the Purina brand. And we're the largest independent distributor of seed and crop protection products to farmers in the United States. And we use NetSuite One World in a two-tier ERP model. So here's actually a diagram showing this. It's a pretty interesting model because it's not just what we have thought about as classic two-tier, but you actually have multiple tiers. So maybe you can explain the environment. Sure. Primarily, we're rolling out NetSuite One World to a lot of our subdivisions around the world, some of our smaller business, some of our more agile businesses uh, in, in emerging markets. In addition to that, we do a lot of partnerships in the agricultural industry. So we're looking at implementing NetSuite into a lot of those partnerships uh, where the cost structures are significantly different than a big uh, multinational corporation. But more importantly, what we're experimenting with right now is with our member owners. Uh, we're working with some of the more advanced owners to look at NetSuite to see how we can help them uh, invest in their operations and become more efficient. So why, why NetSuite for two-tier? What, what did you see? What was the advantage? You know, NetSuite gives us the agility and time to market and speed that we wanted to achieve in these emerging markets. Um, for those of you who work in big companies, it's not easy to downsize your business, to downsize those central functions, to make something work for 5, 10, 50 people operations. And with NetSuite One World, we were able to implement very quickly, very cost effectively, and also give flexibility to these businesses to grow, which in some cases do things pretty differently than our big corporations. Okay. So you just started with a pilot in Mexico. What did you learn from that? We learned that, uh, that we put our bets in the right place, quite frankly. Um, it went extremely well. We have some of our uh, Mexican representatives here, uh, both your partners and our employees. Uh, we're really proud of them. They put it in in about four months, uh, which is two to, two to four months faster than we could have implemented JD Edwards, Oracle, or any of the other products that we looked at. And what, what were the objections that you had to overcome, and how did you overcome them? Interestingly enough, the biggest objections that we had was somewhat in our own internal IT department. You know, um, change management's hard, whether you're working with the business or working with your IT people. Um, you know, fear of the unknown, not knowing how it's going to impact their jobs, not knowing how it's going to change what they do. Rest assured, there's a role for IT in large organizations, uh, but it's going to change a little bit when you move to the cloud. After we overcame that, the business people love it. It went extremely well, and we're really happy. Okay, and any advice you'd give to your peers looking to move to the cloud? I would say just don't be afraid. This is the future of ERP. This is the future of how we're going to be running some of these systems in the future. Okay, thank you very much, Mike. Really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. So you just heard from one of our customers, and uh, what we'd like to do now is bring up Tim Dilley, our Chief Customer Officer, to talk a little bit more about what we're doing for our customers as well. Uh, quick indulgence, go Warriors. Very big game tonight. Woo. Uh, the, the other week, I logged into my online banking site to, uh, to, to pay some bills. When I clicked on the bill pay button, up popped a window that talked about the new features available uh, in bill pay. And it was something like you can now sort payees across multiple accounts. What what it didn't ask me to do was to engage a global integrator to upgrade my online banking account to take advantage of these new features. Over the last three days, we've talked about all of our features that we're rolling out. You saw Evan yesterday for two hours talking about all the great things that we're injecting into the product uh, in our automatic upgrades. And so in the same way, the bank didn't ask me to engage an integrator to take advantage of those new features. We're not going to do that either. We like to call this, we upgrade while you sleep automated upgrades of, um, of cloud computing. Now, this provides a lot of benefits for all of us. Uh, first and foremost, it gets you early access to all these great new features. Uh, it also eliminates the upgrade project, which is a project that is often very difficult to fund. There's usually not a business case that will justify uh, a project of that size. It's typically the same effort as the original implementation. 
Um, so there's tough to get a business case. It gets delayed and delayed and delayed, and you fall further and further behind in capabilities uh, in the application for on-premise systems. Uh, it typically only happens, comes about when there is a something falling out of uh, out of maintenance within the the whole stack, either a technology piece or the application layer. And in cloud computing, we like to say that you'll never have to go through another upgrade. You get to put this whole upgrade process of your ERP application beside behind you and and rely on us to do the upgrades for you. Uh, there's other benefits that happen here. In my mind, as, as, as the manager of our services teams, it flushes a lot of costs out of the system. All of us are on the same release. The whole ecosystem is on the same release of software. When you call in, we never ask you, what release are you running? Uh, we, as, as the support organization, we don't have to have the capability to rebuild bugs or issues you may be reporting from previous releases. You don't have to search the far ends of the earth to find individuals that know how a particular you know, old release from five years ago operates. How do you go find those skills? All of those costs are, are moved out of the ecosystem because we're all running on the same release. And then if you look at the way, the advantages it gives to us in the terms of the way that we, we, we deploy features, if you think about Workflow Manager, which was something we started working on back in 2011, uh, we were able to start that in a beta mode. So we got it out there, we were measuring how much uptake there was, we saw tremendous uptake within the customer base, we expand it to include additional record types, we get more feedback from you, and then over the course of three or four releases, uh, we have gotten feedback all the way uh, along, and now we have a fully featured workflow manager capability that was put into your account without you having to go through an upgrade. Uh, that de-risks the development effort for our development team and allows you to participate in the, in the real development of, that, uh, of, of the, that new feature. So we provide you as much assistance as we can to get prepared for these biannual upgrades. We do it again twice a year. We do it, uh, the dot one release will always be before the end of Q1. We do the dot two release before the end of Q3. It's all documented in your new, new release portlet that pops up in your administrator's account. And this will have links to the sneak peeks that show you the overview of the new features. There's also the detailed release notes that are, that are available out of here. And then there's also uh, significantly the new release video, overview video that is recorded by our product management team, typically by Gary Weisinger, our SVP of product management, where he describes to you where uh, where product management is putting the emphasis and what we, we believe are the key new features in the release. And then additionally, our training team produces uh, multiple videos. Uh, it's, it ranges from 15 to 20, some videos per release that are available in, in our Sweet Answers portal uh, that provide you details on how the new features work. There's videos that are targeted at either uh, end users or administrators. So we provide you all this documentation, all, this, all these videos, all these ways to learn about the new release that come twice a year. But the ultimate tool that we provide you is release preview. So this is, this is your opportunity prior to the release to take a snap, we take a snapshot of your account, we put it into the new code base and allow you to test run your major business processes. Um, you can test your integrations, test your customizations, prior to the actual upgrade happening. I was describing this to a prospect yesterday and I made the analogy, this is like this effort that you have to go through to prepare for the upgrade is analogous to going to the dentist for your teeth cleaning twice a year. You go through this, it's a preventative maintenance tool, it's a bit of effort to do, uh, but it does, it does allow you to avoid having to do that on-premise upgrade, which is much more akin to having to go through a major root canal act operation. So as we look at, the, the, at our services teams and the support that we provide you, uh, we kind of look at it in, in three different layers. We look at the relationship, which obviously starts with your account manager. We've augmented the account manager this year for our more complex customers with technical account management. So those of you that have very complex uh, solutions with multiple accounts and multiple work streams going on, there is technical account management that, that can work with you over time to understand your overall solution so that we can be providing you the best, the best assistance. 
on the day-to-day -day care and feeding of, of, your, of your solution. Uh, we have our customer support team. I, I hope many of you were able to, to meet with our customer support team, the Sweet Gurus team in the back of the, the exhibit hall. Uh, we have over 300 professionals now in our support organization around the globe, in North America, Europe, and in APAC. Uh, th this team has, has grown tremendously over years. And we've also, in the last couple of years, launched our Sweet Answers knowledge base. Uh, you have voted loudly that, this is, uh, that this, is, this is an investment you want us to continue on. It's been, been live for a couple of years now. We have over 50,000 searches a month into this self-service capability that augments our support team where you can contact by phone and by email, but this is your self-service capability. We have almost 10,000 articles in there covering NetSuite and OpenAir, and uh, we're committed to keeping that content fresh. Uh, as we know, we're all running on a, on a single release here. And then to move your solution forward, there is the innovation side of it, and that's where our global professional services team that may have assisted you in your initial implementation is there to help you extend your solution, take advantage of, of new modules, or to, to help you extend your business in new areas. Uh, so our professional services team, which is, and our client management team, which is almost 400 individuals by the end of this year, uh, they're there to, to help you with this innovation. And they do this in conjunction with our partners. Uh, the solution providers, which traditionally we've, we've had around the world, uh, we've got the, the, Jim has spoken to the, and, and Zach spoke to the, the growing national partners that we have, as well as uh, the global integrators that are now getting engaged in, in the NetSuite uh, ecosystem. So speaking of the partners, I do have an announcement to make. Um, not often the services team gets to make an announcement. Uh, but for our partners and for all of our customers, uh, I, I'm pleased to announce that we are going to be rolling out our first certification program uh, at the end of this year. So this is a... Um, oh, very good. An applause line for the services presentation. That's great. Uh, so this is a, the, the, the objective of this, of this certification program is to validate skills uh, for our customers in the, in the, in the, the NetSuite ecosystem to reward customers for their, or report partners, and give them recognition for the experience and the success they've had with our customers. This is gonna be a high stake certification, meaning that it is going to, when you receive this certification, it will be telling you as a customer that this individual has had at least a year's experience implementing NetSuite, as well as uh, success with multiple successful implementations. Uh, we're gonna begin with with ERP consultant certification. We view this as a, as, a, as a program in which we'll be rolling out multiple certifications over time. This will have, the, the program will have uh, two exams, an exam on sweet, uh, the, the sweet fundamentals, and then this first certification that arrives in the fall will, have, will be focused on ERP. And so if you go to the sweet training site, or sweet training section of our external website, uh, you can see the details, it's now up, the, those pages are now up and running, and this should be available uh, for, uh, for actual rollout in October of this year. So look forward to all of you uh, getting engaged in this program, and uh, I'm sure we're going to have great uptake of this. I think this is going to draw a lot of people into the ecosystem and provide more and more skills for all of our customers. So with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Agent ON. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. So for those of you who've been here in prior years, we've done awards every year, and we've done the Hairball Awards, which is you know, somewhat silly, the um, Sweetie Awards, where we gave the awards to the companies. Uh, but this year, we're focusing on individuals and heroes, keeping with the heroes theme. So now we're actually giving the awards to the individuals who are making a big difference in their company's lives helping them innovate, helping them get faster, helping them operate the business more efficiently. So this year we're going to be giving out five awards, uh, the CFO Hero, IT Hero, Controller Hero, Operations Hero, and Business Hero. So with that, let's, let's get going. So the first of the Hero Awards are for CFOs. And this is really for the CFO who saved their company the most money by working with NetSuite. 
And the nominees are Soligent, Ralph Hyman, Corey Douglas, Metadata, and Gary Heeg, Anissa. And the CFO hero is Corey Douglas, Metadata. So when I asked Corey what it is that he liked most about NetSuite, what was the, the biggest value he got from it, he says, I'm always on the best ERP system. I never have to worry about upgrades. I'm always constantly getting new features and new stuff that I can use and implement and make it as good as it can be. So his vision, which I think is a beautiful one, is this no upgrade, always having the best ERP. OK, so the next category is the IT heroes. And the nominees are? Mike McCree, Land of Lakes. John Ogle, Lightspeed. Brian Lucky, Infusionsoft. And the IT hero is Mike McCree, Land of Lakes. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Thank you, Mike. Thanks very much. Cheers. So Mike, we've already heard a lot about, but I mean, certainly Mike's experience, the speed of which he was able to implement this system was just an enormous value to himself and the company. Okay, the next one we have is the controller hero. I was a controller. I was a controller for over 12 years, and then I became a CFO and then a COO. I can tell you, being a controller is, I think, is one of the hardest jobs in the world. It's an incredibly difficult job. Being a CFO is actually much easier, and being a COO is even easier still, but I'll leave that alone. <laughs> So, the nominees for this controller hero is Stephanie Zamora from Hortonworks, <laughs> JP Headley from Solid Technologies, and Mike Mark Waller from Empire. And the controller hero is Stephanie Zamora from Hortonworks. Thank you. So Stephanie and I, when I asked Stephanie what it was she liked most about NetSuite, her answer was the same one that I always give to my controller and CFO friends when I ask what is the biggest value of NetSuite, and it was agility and flexibility. The ability that if something new came up, then NetSuite was going to be able to handle it. And so I couldn't agree more. I think it's just a, a great way to view NetSuite. Okay, the next award is the operations hero, the person who helped their business operate the most efficiently. And the nominees are... Christina Peterson from Phoenix. <laughs> Sabine Castanet from Data Physics. Mike Wood from Noor Programs. And Vanita Wells from Lytro. And the operations hero is Vanita Wells from Lytro. Thank you very much. You know, when Vinita was talking to me about what she loved about NetSuite, she basically told me the story of ERP Inside Out before I even asked her. She said it was her ability to connect her global supply chain, her customers, her distributors around the world using NetSuite as that central hub. So uh, I love it when our customers um, take us in that direction that we'd love to go. Okay, the next and final award is for the business hero. And the nominees are Simon Talbot from P3. Mark Magel from Mitchell, and Rob Roy from LifeProof. And the business hero is Mark Magel, Mitchell. OK, thank you. You know, and Mark, why the business hero? 
What he loved about NetSuite was the use of one world and consolidation to run an entire business and not just a finance operation, running in multiple countries. Uh, and actually, they replaced 20 separate applications when they moved to NetSuite and replaced them with NetSuite. So I think it's phenomenal. OK. So next up. I'm going to talk about our partners. So NetSuite partners are incredibly important to the success of NetSuite and our customers. Our channel, the revenue from our channel, and this is really from our solution providers who actually re resell the product, has been growing just as fast as NetSuite had. But this actually really understates the value that the channel and our partners bring to us. Because now, in over 70% of our deals that we do, there's a partner involved in some form or fashion. Either be a solution provider, or a national systems integrator, or a global system integrator, or a sweet cloud provider or one of our partners provide services. So we deal with almost every situation we deal with, we have a partner involved in the deal. So we're very used to working with the channel. And I think that's one of the reasons why Craig West, the head of our channel organization, has been named the number one next generation channel leader five years in a row. It's just unbelievable. Where's Craig? Craig here? I think I saw him at the Bloody Mary bar earlier on, so you may. So I, just unbelievable success. And we've added a whole bunch of new solution providers and national system integrators over the last year. Here's just a sampling of some of the ones that we brought on it really in the last few months. And these are global. These are in EMEA. These are in North America. These are in APAC. So we're adding them around the world. And that's traditionally what our channel program was in terms of those who resell and implement. And we've done that now for well over 10 years. However, what's changed in the last few years is we've also added to that the global system integrators, the GSIs of this world. So we have great partnerships with Accenture, Capgemini, Deloitte, Wipro. All of these companies, all of them have very large Oracle SAP practices, you know, tens of thousands in each. When they were looking to build a cloud ERP practice, every single one of them evaluated the choices out there, and every single one of them came and said that NetSuite was a clear choice, and all decided to build their cloud ERP practice based on NetSuite. So I think it's incredible validation of the power of, of what Evan and the team has built. And to expand on that, I'd like to bring up one of our first and best partners, Accenture, and I'd like to introduce Saideep Raj, who is the Global Managing Director of Software as a Service. Hey, Saideep, how are you? Good to see you. So I'd just like to ask you, how's the partnership going? Well, first of all, on behalf of Accenture, we are absolutely thrilled to be here. So thank you for including us. Um, about the partnership, it's, uh, you know, we're very proud of the achievement we've made with our Accenture NetSuite partnership. Uh, some fantastic progress. OK, excellent. So what are the trends that you're seeing in the transition of enterprise customers to the cloud? Yeah, in terms of trends, you know, first of all, our clients cloud is accelerating. The, the adoption's increasing, and then we see three key factors. Everywhere I go, it's the same three things that come up. First is speed, speed to market, speed to capability. This is around introducing new services, new products, new regions. And what they're finding is, is often the traditional solutions can't keep pace. The second aspect is what we, we look at as being a, a value-led approach. And so it's not just about the lower total cost of ownership for kind of operation and run and so on. This is about really achieving the business case, you know, the business outcomes. And then the last reason is about this aspect of flexibility, the, the ability to change more readily, to adapt. You know, I see some industries where actually this is the primary reason to kind of move across because they see volatility in their markets and this is a strategic advantage. Okay, and so you've obviously still got a large old class AP practice. Your customers are still making investments in that and doing upgrades, but now they're introducing this two-tier cloud model as well. So how do you see that coexisting? How do you see that working? Yeah, no, I'm glad you bring that up because actually for our clients, that's a big theme about this. You know, they've invested very heavily around some traditional footprints. They continue to grow them, but they're augmenting it with cloud solutions. So this two-tier model is absolutely coming to life. And you know what's interesting? is the technology issues are becoming uh, less pervasive. You know, people have cracked the code around data integration, around security, 
data management and so on. So actually the, the strains are now you know, more in the governance models, how actually they can balance both the speed and flexibility of the platform with you know, the risk and controls that are needed in the enterprise and the, the different ways that the business and IT organizations need to work together. Now, many people will recognize this. It's actually the people challenge that's probably the hardest part of this. Okay, so this sounds like a NetSuite marketing brochure, so <laughs> thank you. So how, um, what advice would you give to your customers when evaluating rolling out cloud products, or cloud ERP in particular? Yeah, I mean, I, I love your theme that you have today, Jim, you know, this, this aspect of inside-out ERP and thinking about the customer experience. You know, and, and one aspect of advice is to, when you think about customer experience, is to be able to proactively define what that looks like. You know, you'd be surprised at how so many organizations, customer experience happens accidentally. And so what we see is when we define it, it's actually not linear anymore. The customer experience used to be, you know, a customer entering a funnel, going through education, awareness, evaluation, the buying step, then fulfillment and service. Well, now it's a more of a continuous loop between channels, mobile, social, and actually the evaluation step is at the center of the process versus the buying step. So, so we call that the non-stop customer experience. And so what, in order to make this inside out approach happen, you know, that non-stop customer experience is gonna be key. Okay, well thank you very much. I really appreciate it, it's been a great partnership. Thanks for coming. Thanks Jim. Thank you. So one more award, Worldwide Partner of the Year Award. So on Monday, we had a, a partner meeting where we had 700 people there, many partners, and we hand out multi awards for regional SPs, various regional awards, uh, solution providers, technical, global. And we take from all these nominees, and there was a press release yesterday listing out all those. Uh, we take from all these nominees, and we pick the one Worldwide Partner of the Year Award. And it's something we take very seriously. We spend a lot of time talking about debating it. And this one partner grew their practice 400% last year. It was, in fact, the fastest growing practice they've ever had within their firm. They've never had a, a new product, a new practice grow as fast as this one. So with that, I would like to announce McGladry as the Worldwide Partner of the Year. I bring up Steve Ems, the principal and national COM and ERP leader. Congratulations, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Steve and the team have been phenomenal to work with. Uh, it's just been a great partnership, and uh, I, I talked to Steve earlier, and he thinks he'll see even bigger growth this year, so that is fantastic. Okay. So, now we have a video. Some of the highlights of Sweet World so far. So with that, I'd like to play this video so you can see what you've all been up to. and to accomplish my strategy for my department, I wanted to learn more about NetSuite and optimizing our processes. We operate in actually 48 different countries, uh, with NetSuite being our financial ERP across all those countries. So we have a huge vested interest in um, you know, getting with, seeing where, seeing where the product roadmap looks like.
My favorite part of the keynote was the portion of the CEO speech where he indicated that the company had done an implementation in three weeks and that was an eye-opener for us in terms of what the company is capable of. Love to always explore what different partners are doing, what solutions they are coming up with. I love what uh, NetSuite is going to do with Autodesk. Uh, the manufacturing piece was incredible. Um, the simulations, just know, I mean, it's where the world's going. Evan's keynote is always exciting with all the new features. I think the IDE uh, was really, really exciting. I'm looking forward to that. The show is growing, having 5,000 people here, the foot traffic has been good. So we like the fact that they are actually uh, expanding the ecosystem because that's very good for their partners. This is the most uplifting event in the, in the calendar and Zach Nelson is a, a consummate showman. We love the show, it's been an amazing experience every single year, it gets better every single year. We get a little glimpse into the future when we come here. So it's been a fantastic, sweet world. Um, people come to these events to learn, to connect with other people, and to get re-energized about the possibilities of what you can do, we can all do together. So with that, we still have some breakout sessions coming up today. But before we finish, I'd like to give a big thank you to Minnie Perez and Jennifer Donner, the two you, people who really helped put this whole event on. So we'll see you back here next year for Sweet World 2014. Thank you very much, everyone. It's been fantastic. Thank you.